don't ever film on Saturdays, but I decided to can green beans today. So I'm about to show you all my very first experience pressure canning. This is not going to be a full tutorial because like I said, this is my first time. I just pulled this thing out of the box. It barely has a few fingerprints on it. So I'm just going to walk through the process. I have been so intimidated to pressure can and I don't know why because it's not like the the mechanism is going to explode. It's not going to pop off and blow up my house like you hear these horror stories of pressure canning. I guess it's just there's the steps involved are different than water bath canning and I just mastered water bath canning. I do use my instant pot for some of my water bath canning, which I have a tutorial on from last year. So this is not a tutorial, but I just want to take you all through the process. I've watched several tutorials and I will link some of the ones below that I've watched that have helped me learn this process. So we're just going to go through it together today, show you that this is not hopefully as intimidating. I'm still a little intimidated. There's like steps running through my head and I'm like, I hope I don't forget a step. But anyways, I have snapped my green beans, snapped the ends off and then snapped them into, I love that sound. So I'm going to hot pack. You can do a cold pack, a raw pack, or a hot pack. So those are just going to stay in there for about two to three minutes just to slightly blanch. We'll kind of make them a bit smaller so that I can pack them a little better into my jars. They're going to turn from that beautiful shade of purple to green really, really fast. All that I've done thus far is fill it up with three quarts of water and I have it slightly warming. So this is the gauge, right now it's a zero. This is the vent pipe and this is the regulator. This is, this is the part I'm nervous about, is this regulator part and the gauge and the time and everything. And I will be sitting beside my green beans as they can the entire 25 minutes, I believe it is, yeah, it's 25 minutes at 10. PSI. What does PSI stand for? I need to look that up. It's the pressure in the pot. So um, this is the part I'm nervous about, but hopefully all goes well. I've watched this tutorial like four times to make sure I know what to do. So this is just staying warm and I will turn the heat up once we actually put our green beans in. Okay. So the water that I'm going to in, I'm going to reserve to actually pour over my jars. Let's get the jars out. a large batch today, but I didn't really want to do a ton on my first try. So you see they're nice and green now. Just slightly and they will finish turning green in the cooking container because that will actually finish some of the cooking process. I'm going to squeeze these in. enough for four but it's time it's okay we don't have to do a huge a huge bulk can not that there should really be anything on here because this is just green beans it's not like a sticky pickle or jam but I have ruined an entire like four batches of preserves before by not wiping the rooms. So that's a habit I've ensured that I do now. Oh, oh I already forgot a step. Let's make sure all the bubbles are out. And just kind of tap your jars and let the bubbles rise to the top. this is kind of a waste because I only have two quarts in here but it'll be okay moving on this is kind of tricky I had to check my instruction tutorial everything's in there it's starting to build its pressure this lid is locked on tight. It's not going anywhere. It's not going to explode off my, out of my kitchen. 
I hope. Um, yeah, I'm really not worried about that. Efforts. I've watched so many tutorials of this. I'm not worried about that part. It's just this whole making sure my pressure stays constant because if your pressure drops below what it's supposed to be, and for green beans it's 10 psi um, pressure. What is that? Pounds per square inch. So that's the pounds of pressure. Anyways, if it drops below 10 during its processing time, you have to restart this whole process over, and that's what I don't want to happen. So I've watch several people talk about if it's your first time pressure canning to get a little chair and just sit beside it the entire processing time so that's what i'll be doing when we get there so for right now it's sort of a weight game i need this to start steaming out constantly and then i'll set my timer for 10 minutes i don't really know what that's for yet let me know down below if you can clarify that i'll i'll get better at this before i give you all a full tutorial this is just me showing you all my first raw and real experience pressure canning then i believe i will add this and then wait for my pressure to build to 10. That's when my processing time will start. I'm using quartz, so my processing time is 25 minutes. The ball um, canning book will tell you all of this, but also my pressure canning instructions gave me instructions on how to, of course, use the machine, but also different recipes. So we have like how to can corn, which we're gonna be doing actually probably tomorrow or the next day. We just got our corn out and we're gonna be creaming it and then I'll be canning that. Green beans. We're going to hot pack, did that. Y'all, I forgot to add the salt. Okay, so I just need to remember that these beans are not salted and I need to add salt when I cook them, which the salt does not interfere with the preservation of the, the item. It just gives you the flavor. So yeah, just realized I forgot to add salt. And I'm gonna process 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Okay, this is 11 pounds. Okay, 11 pounds. The tutorial I watched said 10 pounds, but I'm gonna go by the actual manual and deal with 11 pounds. I am just starting to hear some steam come out of here. Once the steam starts coming out of the vent pipe, I will set my timer for 10 minutes. Then we will add the regulator. So let's talk a minute about canning. I think most people, many people leave that you have to have like a backyard garden to can in this quantity, but you don't. You can easily buy food from the store, from farmer's markets, and can those things. That's, it's, it's simple. I mean, I think most people think that to can, you have to have such a bulk of something, but you see, y'all, I'm canning two quarts of green beans. But my husband's actually out picking some more green beans right now, and I'm probably gonna start this process over again now that I'm feeling a little more confident, y'all. I hear some steam coming out. I also hear my baby awake, so that's not good. This is not the time for her to be waking up when I'm in the midst of pressure canning. So, let me go see if I can settle her before this 10 minutes is up. She is not going back to sleep, so I'm just going to let her hang out with us while we finish this. Steam is coming out. I'm waiting for 10 minutes before I add the regulator and let her pressure build. In Timer just went off for 10 minutes. I'm adding this part, the regulator. This is the part that's intimidating me a bit. So we're just going to carefully watch for the pressure to get to 10, sorry, 11. The tutorial watch said 10, but the canning book said 11, so I'm going with 11. Yeah, it might be a good idea if you put a lot of somewhere in the playroom while that goes off so she doesn't, that thing doesn't explode. It is not going to explode. They don't make them like that anymore. <laughs> so you're worried about her, but not me. <laughs> okay, we're at 11 PSI. So I'm setting my timer for 20, okay, five minutes. And I'm just going to get a chair.
making some lemonade. 25 minutes is up and so are all of my children. So all I've done is turn off the burner just like three minutes ago and my pressure has already decreased to around seven or eight from that 11. So it stayed pretty constant. I kept it right at 11. It did jump up to 13, 14 for just a second when I was making some lemonade and let that pressure build a little high. So I hope that doesn't affect anything um, in my from my research. It's okay if it gets a little bit above the recommended PSI, but you don't want to ever let it get below that PSI of 11 for the green beans. And again, any whatever food you're doing will have a different PSI pressure pounds per square inch that it needs to build up to. So definitely always rec always look to your recipe for how much PS for the PSI that needs to process at. I'm going to start another batch as soon as these come out because in the midst of me doing this pressure can, um, my husband and son picked and snapped a whole nother bowl of green beans for me to can. So this is a little, probably about what I just did, so probably two quarts. I might can fit two quarts in a pint, not sure, probably just two quarts. It's a green bean. It's slowly depressurizing. I'm just gonna turn off the camera, let it sit, then I will take the lid off, get the beans out. Always wanna put hot cans on a towel on your counter because if you shock that glass in the midst of it changing temperatures, you could risk busting your newly canned green beans. Okay, now in the next 15 or 20 minutes, I should start hearing the jars pop. Hopefully, I might have already missed it because I've been outside for a few minutes. Um, I'm going to pour water everywhere. They are just bubbling away, very hot still. Okay, I'm going to just keep going on these batches. I'm going to put these jars that just got sterilized out of my Instant Pot back in the steam canner. Hey y'all, it's the next afternoon because this morning I was actually canning corn in the dark. We lost power. We still are out of power, but I wanted to show you the green beans. It turned out perfect. They passed the the lift test, basically if you lift up on the can ring, it doesn't move, it's a good seal. So I've already taken the rings off of these three. I need to take the ring off of this one and I'll check it. Yep, all these are good. You can also take a pin. You want it to sound like 10 when you tap it. All these that I can this one. It was kind of a learning curve to figure out exactly where to put my burner to make sure that I kept my gauge where it was supposed to be at that 11 pounds of pressure. There was a couple times that it hit above 11. There was a couple times it was about to go below and I caught it really quick. So I definitely recommend if this is your first time pressure canning to stay beside your canner and don't walk away. There was a couple of times the kids pulled me away and could have gone bad because you don't want it to go below that PSI that is recommended for your canning your food that you're canning. So I hope you're encouraged that this machine is not nearly as intimidating and as scary as I made it out to be. And I know many others of you have reached out and said that you're just so intimidated to press your can. It was actually much, much easier than I expected. And I'm really excited to do even more here in the next few weeks throughout the summer as we are still bringing in harvest from our garden. So thank y'all so much for sticking with me on my first pressure canning experience. And I will see y'all in future garden canning, mothering, all the videos that I bring to this channel. See y'all in the next one.